Okay, this is my QCX 40 meter uh, CW transceiver, uh, and I've been setting it up for uh, for uh, Whisper, and I've got uh, I put a jack in there and a cable in, hooked it up to the to pins there. I really couldn't figure out a good way, and I couldn't find a connector that matched that holes, and I didn't want to have to disconnect and connect this thing every time if I ever want to use it for for anything else, and so I got that jack put in there and then i've got this uh uh aircraft jack to plug in there and uh, and this cable hooked up to the uh, olg1 i've got the uh, red power light the data light and the one pulse per second light on it we'll hook it up here in a minute but i was just going to show you um so i made sure that the practice mode is off and uh so anyway i you go to the beacon and I turn you you turn the beacon on, which puts it in uh, in the um, beacon mode. It's in the, I set it for whisper mode, and I set that in for the, uh, the frequency. I, I'm not totally sure on the frequencies. I wish there was a little bit better expl explanation. The book just shows uh, zero seven zero four zero 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 two. Uh, um the last digits the, the highest being 200 as being the range of the frequencies for this so that's what i just said in there i saw that on uh, whispernet i put that at frame 10 and uh, start that time in four minutes so four minutes it will come on at four minutes 14 minutes 24 minutes and so on uh, uh it, each time it transmits so i've got it uh transmitting 10, 10 minutes long or you know every 10 minutes and starting at the four minute mark so not everybody's starting i put my call sign in mine was pretty straightforward it wasn't a shortened call sign so i didn't have any problems trying to figure out the spaces that went in there i was a little confused about uh my maiden head locator but that best i could figure out that's what to put in mine was dm 39 ph six long but you can only put four in so i put the first three four in for my location and uh 37 on the power uh which is five five watts this transmitter is actually a little less than that i probably should set that i should probably set that at uh at 33 i'd actually be a little closer um if i if you put the wrong one in here it will not accept that when you exit out of out of it and the set time i don't bother with that now that i've got the the um the gps unit on there so um exit out of the mode and uh and it's it's gone right into the into the beacon mode so i'm gonna hook up um i'm gonna go ahead and plug in i probably should do this with the power off but i've done this a number of times and haven't haven't had any problems i've plugged in uh plugged in this this cable and uh, got it going now and anyway it's still counting down it's got to get uh, if you just first plug this in i wish it would maintain your time setting in the transmitter but it doesn't as soon as you unplug power from this transmitter it loses the time but now it's it's i've got it hooked up to the gps the gps has got a, a green light which seems to indicate that it has everything to go and uh but anyways it seems as if i have to enter in the the maiden locator i don't know if it will do that if i go out in the boonies somewhere and set up i don't know whether that will just automatically enter my my location or what i'd have to experiment with that because uh i'm pretty sure i've got my location so it's counting down and it needs to reach uh minute 14 so we're at uh we are at minute 13 and uh are pretty close to it we'll be there in about two more seconds so now we're at 13 minutes we're still not transmitting and uh we're still uh we're still going with uh with that but anyways it's uh it's counting down so we got about 45 seconds to go before it starts transmitting and uh it transmits at least a good two minutes i uh on this particular rig i put I put a copper, I just got a piece of copper, had a thick piece of copper in my stuff, 
cut it and shaped it to just be just enough to, to silicone it onto the face of those transistors. And the first transmission that I tested it, and I don't know, I couldn't even hardly tell that it got warm. So uh, I'm not doing a real high elevated power, but it with that copper on there, I think I'm going to, I should be plenty safe for a heat sink. I think I could, if, if I transmit it at 10 minute intervals, I think I could do that all day long. But I wanted to make sure that the transist, that's why I've got the cover off. I wanted to make sure that was not going to be uh, too high. So we're, you can see we're transmitting now. It's getting close to the five watts. We're about four watts that it's putting out uh, on the whisper mode. So you can see that it's the over on the very right, you can see it's sending the one, three, one, two, and so on. It's sending the different digits and we're 33 counts into it. It goes up to about a hundred and 62 before it uh before it finishes that uh that transmission and we're just of course we're just going into a dummy load right now and uh so it's transmitting my uh you know my call sign in the area and um and the uh and the power so it'd be interesting to see uh, you know when i get ready to hook this up to the antenna of course i'm gonna use the other rig to gently tune the tuner and make sure the antenna is pretty well down to zero uh, SWRs before I hook that up. I'm sure because I'm running a flat SW zero SWR on this so I'm not feeding any power back into the radio and I'm assuming those transistors would get a lot warmer if you were going 1.5 to 1 uh, on an antenna. You know you're running it up there a little bit high on your SWR. I'm pretty sure you'd have uh, uh, definitely a lot more warmth than what I have right now. And I, I think that's partially, I couldn't even really tell that the transistors got warm at, uh, that kind of a power. So we're up to 142. We're still, we're still kicking out the power It's still sending the data, uh, out. And so we're getting up to the point where it's going to shut off here pretty, pretty quick 62. So now it's shut off. Now it's calibrating uh the, the it's calibrating the transceiver there and now it came up with the correct time it it uh, from the gps it downloaded the data so it uh it works that's pretty fantastic and uh perhaps a little update here i i had another video on this little gps unit that i got from uh from overseas I didn't pay very much for it, but this is a whole case and everything that I put up for it. Whatever it's transmitting, there is something that's not right. It works, and when I hook it to directly to the computer, it locates and does everything it's supposed to when I hook it up to U-Block. So there's something about the data that it's transmitting or something it doesn't seem to want to interface. So I'm going to learn more about the U-Blocks. It'll be uh, stuff I'm, I can either make a clock with this or other things, but uh, when I learn to program this GPS module, it may be that I can figure out uh, uh, how to make it work with this particular situation. Otherwise, I've got myself a little project box. But anyway, that's what I have up on, on this. And so we, we are already uh, transmitting again. Um, so uh, <laughs> that was quick. I must have the frame set different than I think I do. Oh, I know why it's transmitting so so quick back on is because when it set the time see i was just started at the time clock at uh, midnight all zeros and so it took it uh four minutes before and if i had to had the 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 gps hooked up it wouldn't have transmitted for another 10 minutes but since it calibrated the time um it must have been uh fairly close it must have been fairly close to uh, a time frame that was uh uh, going to allow it to transmit. So it was 1700 hours and something. So we'll see uh, what it does. So we're not going to have to wait very long before it, it shuts off. So it will give us, it will give us another countdown. So anyways, I'll have to check those transistors and see how they feel. But uh, everything, I haven't got no smoke coming out of nothing yet. So that's a, that's a good sign. So there it just shut off. Our power meter went down to zero. And now we're uh, calibrating again. And so that's telling us right there 
that we're going to have to wait till uh, 44 minutes. It's going to, it's 1736, so it's got to get clear up to 44 before it uh, kicks out the next uh, transmission in 10 minutes. So anyway, th there you have it. So I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm thinking the best, because uh, if I, if I take and kick this uh, like I did earlier, I don't think I'm hurting anything, but I don't want to do it. But if I punch that and kick it out of the whisper mode back into its regular mode, uh with this connected it will just sit here and be transmitting uh ding ding every second it'll be sending out uh transmission and if you just happen to not have it hooked up to something it would burn your rig out so you either got to disconnect this thing um you know the con disconnect this unit here before or unplug the entire power and just take everything out I have done this a number of times. I don't know what's, you know, recommendable or not recommendable. But if I do that and unplug it and then hit the exit, then I'm I'm back into the regular transmission mode. You just don't want the GPS unit hooked up to it while you do that because then it just starts transmitting. Um, but anyways, that's it all seems to work well.